lucky to have experienced such a rare opportunity. Being able to make a living from making music is something that most people can't say Chat, they've ever I'd done. be However, honest, I feel like Jish used to want to be a SoundCloud rapper. Who else in here wanted to be a rapper at some point? When their career starts to decline, there are different ways of dealing with it. One way in particular is to live in denial, holding on to the fame and fortune that they once held so close. So today we're going to be looking nah, into rappers bro. who cannot Buzz accept me. that they've fallen off. Starting off with French Montana. Also, by the way, my name is Mike Ball. If you guys guts. like music-related videos, make sure to stick around and subscribe. I'm going to be posting one every week star. this year at 12 p.m. Is that my Jersey Shore Sundays. shirt? So, uh, yeah, stick around. Now let's get into it. My dream, you should be. French Montana went from having multiple Ten. hits in the That's mid 2010s to faking streams and desperately clinging on to fame by the end of the Bro, decade. I'm chat, not gun to your head, name five French Montana songs. I can't even name one. I'm going to go too deep into French Montana's come up since he's been in the game for a very long time. He's released a ton of mixtapes, a handful of albums, and tons of huge singles over the span of his career. He started blowing up a ton of <coughs> songs like Pop That, Lockjaw, No Stylus, and of course his biggest song ever, Unforgettable. But one thing that was always notable about all of French Montana's big songs was the features. Most people weren't really yeah. tuning in to Unforgettable or No Stylus to hear French. No, I have they no wanted to voice. hear Sway Lee and Drake. But this is something that French Montana didn't seem to realize until his numbers started going down. His place in hip hop is made most obvious when you think about that picture Diddy posted on Instagram with Jay-Z, Nas, and Kendrick with French Montana photoshopped out. Diddy didn't even crop, what? crop him out. He went through the effort of photoshopping French Montana out, out so he could say three kings, Three great friends. Love you guys. Honestly, I damn, bro. Diddy is so I, I feel bad for him. That had to have been heartbreaking. In 2019, his third studio album, Montana, sold 25,000 copies first week. That's about half of what his damn, previous album that's sold. Terrible. Not only that, but he was also caught in a fake stream controversy around this time as well. In December of 2019, Twitter user Carla Main posted a thread accusing French Montana and his team of hacking into people's Spotify accounts to stream his song, writing on the walls what the many fuck? screenshots of other people Hacking? saying their account was randomly playing the song they also noted how the song was 21 That's on the crazy. spotify charts but it was 1192 on the apple music charts which clearly indicated how the streams were being faked on spotify i went into more detail on this in my video called the biggest you gotta game in the music industry it. so if you're interested in botted streams feel free to check it out after this video and despite how crazy faking your streams is things somehow managed to get worse for french in april of 2020 french montana I made like one so of the biggest Twitch mistakes of his entire viewers. career when he said that he has more hits than Kendrick Lamar. More specifically, he said to Compton, What? I mean, honest no, French Montana thought he was on level with Kendrick. To his sub artillery. You could put somebody like Kendrick Lamar next to me on the same stage at a festival. I might outshine him. Not because I'm a better rapper or whatever it is. It's just that I got more hits. This sent the internet into a frenzy with everybody clowning on French Montana. He even had Young Thug making fun of him. Stupid ass. He got more hits than Kendrick Lamar. Everybody on the internet collectively agreed Damn. that both statistically speaking and musically speaking, Kendrick Lamar is better. Not only have you never had a number one hit, Kendrick has had eight laying in the top 10, while you've only had two. Still an accomplishment, but it's nowhere near enough for you to be like, Damn. oh, I got more hits than Kendrick Lamar. French Montana. This seemed to be the beginning of the end for French Montana's His career. His beard is so Following weird. This, uh, I don't like beards that are super, like one straight line. I like a little shape to them, a little curve. His beard is weird. His beard is weird. Hilarious weird thread beard. started when someone tweeted a Squid Games meme saying, For the next game, you need to name five French no Montana real. songs without features. French Montana himself then decided to respond to this tweet with like 14 of his own songs. With the top reply being, All you proved is that French Montana is the only person that can name five solo French Damn. Montana songs. After this, French Montana had a Whoa. bit of a breakdown on Twitter. Just spamming about how people have amnesia and are... That's crazy, bro. He crashing out over this. Forgetting all of the amazing albums that he had given them. It turns out, though, that this meltdown and the whole idea that the listeners have amnesia was actually just promo for his next album, They Got Amnesia. He dropped the lead single for the album, F Bro, not him taking his shirt off like he trained. W-M-G-A-B, right after the Twitter. Not even close on Discord. Drama. 
so it was clearly an attempt at promotion. Months later, he released the album They Got Amnesia. And if you can't tell... Is this real? Chat. Chat! Rah! Oh my god, this is the best day of my life. This is the best day of my life right now. Oh my god, oh yeah. I'm so happy. I can die. It seems like the title of the album was literally inspired by people who apparently right had amnesia since they couldn't remember how successful French Montana was. But in reality, it just seemed like he was in denial of what his place was in the rap game. Most a recently, bottom. he released a million different versions of a bunch of his songs on his new album, what Mac and fuck? Cheese Live. Likely trying to get more streams or have more of a chance at going viral on TikTok. Now, what French Montana did was he's releasing his own Mac edits of his Cheese songs. Five, but he released it again dude, and so. again. And again, and again, and again. And if these six versions of the album were what not enough to fuck? get your attention on streaming services, don't worry, because French then went on to release every version of the album's 21 songs as singles, so they didn't just infect his streaming profile, but all of the rappers featured. One of the reasons he did this with the what singles the is because it would spam up up here on every featured artist's Spotify page. Oh, and he also released a 126 song version of the album as well called mac and cheese five versions one person tweeted this looks what like a cry fuck? for help like damn you must really need some streams it was honestly just pathetic and very embarrassing for our boy french and even after That's all insane. of these horrible marketing gimmicks french montana's mac and cheese five only sold thirty four thousand copies yeah i've heard of french not only montana that, but it so seemed like long, he was bro. involved in a vinyl sales scam in an attempt to boost album sales essentially before his album released french montana had vinyls available for pre-order for only five dollars according the to billboard fuck is these french sales to count they would have to be shipped by the album's release date a twitter user by the name of dro <laughs> said French Montana sold vinyl records scamming. on his site for $5 pre-orders back I'm in January, he was grinding, with huh? all the albums needing to be shipped on the least streams, to count bro. towards sales. Listen, you can't hate on almost him. everyone that purchased grinding it has media. had it delivered to a random address. This seems to be a case of fake shipping confirmations in order to boost sales numbers for the album. Multiple people responded to the tweet claiming the same thing happened to them that their record was supposedly delivered, but to some random location. So it seems like French Montana's team had a bunch of fake shipping confirmations made in an attempt to get they those were scamming, sales in. Damn. At this point in his career, French Montana keeps trying to grasp onto the fame that he once had, when in reality, he's just digging himself a deeper hole. I'd honestly be surprised yeah. if anyone takes him serious after everything he's said and done in the past few years. And just because In French L. Montana's career stinks doesn't mean you have to. Lately, I've been really trying no, to... No, 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 no. ...commit to a full... ...fumes, uh, tick. I've earned dollars this month like this... The only person I listen to Fragrance is about is Jamie Fragrance. ...this one here they make this video. And many rappers who blow up are lucky Fuck. to have experienced such a rare opportunity. The whole mumble rap pump. Lil Po. Now let's get back to when he was on top of the world, Bro, was essentially ben told by J. Cole Pum. that he would fall off. And when it happened... He I denied with them, that no. it happened. Most of us know Lil Pump. Ben was Lil Pump's biggest stand. Pump, but if you're not no, familiar with him, he's he one of the out main artists that gang, was responsible gang, for gang. the whole mumble rap label. Lil Pump started buzzing in 2016 and blew up even more in 2017 like with Lil songs Pump's like journey. Heroes and Boss. His songs can be characterized by their lack of lyrics. He aged so terribly from all the drugs and drinking and stuff. See, I started, I started singing the song, Ben can't help but say the next verse. And repeating of I lyrics, love it. Like the chorus on I can't Euro. believe he got then a song later with in Kanye. Later he released the song Gucci <coughs> Gang, which absolutely I blew up, peaking at that. number three on the Billboard Hot 100 and eventually going platinum. After that, he released his debut self-titled album with features from artists like Lil Yachty, Chief Keef, Gucci Mane, and more. These songs were fun, but the lack of lyrical content Damn. was something that many people thought wouldn't last, including J. Cole himself. See, J. Cole and Lil Pump had a little bit of a beef. Although it was more so playful. Lil Pump started it all Lil by Pump's saying F.J. Cole, terrible. likely just to piss people off and get more attention. And it worked, as many old heads were mad and the young kids loved it. This was a trend for a while, but J. Cole never responded. 
at least directly. However, after You're releasing his album, KOD, hoe. in April of 2018, Dude, people noticed KOD. that the song 1985 seemed to have something to do with Lil Pump. In the song, he says, All these people popping now is young. Everybody say the music they make is dumb. You gotta give a boy a chance to grow some. He continues, I heard one of them diss me. I'm surprised. I ain't tripping. Listen good to my reply. Come here, little man. Let me talk with you. See if I can paint for you the larger picture. Damn. By this point, it's clear that J. Cole is talking about Lil Pump, but decides to take an empathetic approach since Pump was only 18 at the time. Cole congratulates him on all of his success and even tells him to never quit touring because that's where most of the money comes from. But then Cole says, You could have bought a crib with all that bread you done blew. I know you think this type of revenue is never ending, but I want to take a minute just to tell you that it ain't true. Damn. One day, you have kids that's listening gonna grow up and get too old for that shit that made you blow up. Real. Shows looking light because they don't show up which unfortunately means the money slow up now you scrambling and hoping to get hot again but you Real. forgot you only popped because you was riding trends i'm just telling you what's probably gonna happen when you rapping about the type of shit you rapping about it's a faster route to the bottom i wish you good luck i'm hoping for your sake that you ain't as dumb as you look j cole laid Damn. out exactly what the current status of his career was and what would eventually happen rather than dissing him like many would. Funnily enough, they even had a conversation on J. Cole's page, squashing the beef while Cole seemingly tried to give Pump some more advice. I guess came up with the J. Cole shit. Who's <laughs> the paper? I really wrote it down. Because if I didn't write it out, I would have oh, forgot, wow. yeah. You know, like in the room one day and I seen that shit in my, like, like in my comments, people were like, fuck J. Cole, fuck J. Cole. I'm like, oh, so it was already happening. Yeah, little Who's a hoe? What do you mean? No. But Lil Pump did not heed J. Cole's this warning. Slowly but surely, with pretty much every release after 2018, his numbers started going down. People were tuning in and expecting people still even different listen from to Lil Pump, Pump, but he wasn't giving it to them. It was the same gimmick and cookie cutter formula on every song and every album. And by the end of 2020, he was in the exact same position that J. Cole predicted. He even appeared at a Trump rally in 2020, seemingly grasping at straws. Dude, for Tesla, I remember as he that. Literally say F Donald Trump a few years prior. And speaking of sound music, why and would Donald Trump bring Little Pump on the stage? What a random crossover! Things, one of the big superstars of the world, Little Pimp. <laughs> there he is. Does everyone know who he is? Do uh, you know how big he is? Little Pimp. Trump caught a Little Pimp. What the fuck? I love, dude. What the fuck? I love that Little Pimp. It was pretty funny but just seemed like another publicity stunt for Pump. Eventually, in 2022, he was interviewed by Bootleg Kev, who actually asked Lil Pump if he thought J. Cole's predictions were true. Do you feel like he predicted kind of like what ended up happening with your rap career? Nope. No. Because I'm still here. I got I I'm not saying houses. that you're. I'm not saying that you're not like still fucking rich and successful. I just mean in terms of like, you know, I feel like... There's so many This guy's trying his nicest way to tell little pump he fell off. What up, Rube? The parts of that era of rap where like people got fame so fast, they were so young. You know what I'm saying? Like and I feel like that was some of the foresight that he was saying. Not even necessarily about quote unquote. What up extra? Off. You know what I mean? Uh, Do you don't mean think that? he you don't think he predicted anything? I don't think big as shit. Despite Kev trying to yeah. ask that in the most respectful way possible, Pump had too much pride to accept the fact that he had fallen off. Most recently, he released his album Lil Pump 2, which did not do too well. According to Wikipedia, the album was projected to earn significantly less units Damn, than his first I didn't even know he still released album, music. Failing to chart on any chart. He was even getting clowned on this for his song Pump Rock X Heavy Metal, which was essentially a really bad attempt at some type of rock. He tried to make a rock song. Jake Cole perfectly predicted I wonder what Lil it Pump's sounds future, like. Should we listen to it? Not Lil Pump. It. it made a rock song. Smoke Perp. Simple. Bro, is, is he the one that's like Naruto Nine Tails? That guy. Similar note to Lil Pump, Smoke Perp also had a hard time accepting his position in the rap game after he fell off. Smoke Perp is a rapper who really blew up in the shadow of Lil Pump, although he Damn. did have some hits on his SoundCloud, like the song Audi. Just like Lil Pump, Smoke Perp was one of the many buzzing Florida rappers, and even collabed with artists like XXXTentacion. After releasing his hit song Audi, he followed up with his mixtape Dead Star that debuted at 42 on the Billboard 200 
with features Damn. from artists like Travis Scott and Chief Keef. He even became bad. a double XL freshman in 2018. But after that, Smoke Perp struggled to make waves. Other than his feature on Costa Rica, which was outshined by the many other guest verses, he didn't really have many hits. Damn. Don't get me wrong, he had a ton of songs that, that performed fairly well throughout the entirety of his career. But just like Lil Smoke Pump, his career blurb. didn't show much longevity. Bruh. And just like French Montana, many of his songs were carried by the features. Not only that, but with how close he was with Pump and how much bigger Pump was, Smoke Perp Perp's career was kind of in Pump's shadow. One thing that would hit towards Smoke Perp's downward spiral was his freestyle on- Imagine being in the, the fucking shadow of Lil Pimp. Tim Westwood in 2019, which if you haven't heard, was awful. I'm a motherfucking stoner. I'm a motherfucking boner. <laughs> what? Did he, just say he's, did he just say he's a boner? He just call himself a dick? A hard cock? No way. He's just digging the hole deeper. He claims that he was just having fun, but that didn't stop the entire internet from clowning on him for years to come. The video has a whopping 70,000 dislikes, and they even had to turn off the comments. Even to this Damn. day, I think people are still joking about the freestyle. About What's a month that? after that, Smoke Perp posted on his Instagram story, first they said I'm falling off, then their new excuse was we want old Perp, made the whole Florida JIT album like old mosh pit Perp, and now those same people are acting like they been knew I was about to turn back up like this. I'm streaming crazy and my music going up more than ever. Basically, he was denying that he fell off, saying he was doing Damn. better than ever before, and when then people are was doing bad, his doing next good. Album for they they usually don't post things like that on their Instagram story, like crash. Like he literally typed that on Snapchat, screenshot it, and posted on his Instagram story. But people saw through it. And one of I'm the top comments is, bro can't accept the fact that he fell off, so he keeps can't lying to the himself, fact that he's a which was honestly true. Especially since right after that, exactly. he released his album Florida Jit, and it only sold 5,000 copies, and only 130 digital albums oh my sold as God. well. He got clowned into oblivion on the internet. So much so that he even played into the joke and said another free project on the way. Perp really took a hit here and wouldn't really be talked about much more until 2022. A video yeah. was posted online of Smoke Perp performing at a show to a crowd that looked like it was about 20 people. Oh my like god, does, I remember everyone that. Everyone began making fun of his fall off online. Someone in his Instagram <laughs> comments asked him, Is it true that you only had a few people at some show? I saw some video about it, I think. To which Perp Rip. replied, Yeah, there was a show that was pretty empty that I didn't have to do, but I'm gonna give my fans a show regardless always i wouldn't be here without them i think a lot of fans like this response and thought That's he was being rip. kind hearted but it was a rip. show on his tour so i think he did have to do it i think that was a lie regardless after that hello you seen reported that smoke perp didn't show up to a show in cleveland and that 20 people the 20 people waiting for him were kicked out of the venue after requesting refunds a lot of artists struggle to swallow their pride and admit that they have fallen far from where they damn were. chat you couldn't get more than 20 people to turn up in Houston for you, bro? I feel like I could convince at least more than 20 people to come see me rap. And, like, just maybe within my community, like, just, yo, like, just do it so we can beat Smoke Perp. Like, you couldn't get more than 20, bro? They once were. And some people may believe them when they say that they're doing better than ever. But Perp's actions over the last couple of years have really shown Not good where his career is at. Most recently, he's been seen selling features and That's trying to crazy. nickel and dime his fans. And they're like, we need approval from Smoke Perp because, you know, he has a bit of status in the music world. Uh -huh. We need a DM from him confirming this release. I'm like, okay, no, yeah. no issue. I text him and he well, gets back rap to me show. With, I mean, no, bro, even if they're just, yeah, even if they're just there to get drunk and fucked up and go crazy and see people, that's insane. Like, Wait, what? I paid you, I paid you for the feature. No. I hate podcasters who think they're so fancy and down to earth. Like, why is this guy got his feet in the camera? Like, sitting there with khakis and his socks and shoes on. If I came in to do an interview and this guy was here, I would run out. This is a red flag. This guy is bad news. He's like, yeah, but you didn't pay for clearance. You paid me for the feature. So I'm like, I paid you for a song I can't release. What do you mean? Exactly. Like, why would I do that? Perp then claimed that his price to clear a song was 10k, but that he would settle for $500, which is a what the fuck telltale sign that Perp yeah, desperately needed some weird. money. Right as I'm about to press send, he unsends the confirmation message and everything else about crypto. And I actually screen recorded it because I saw the unsend messages coming up. So I started screen recording it. Yeah, I'll yeah. send this to you, bro. So basically, Perp was trying to scam this guy, which really shows how far his career has fallen. Not only that, Damn. but him and Pump have both been trying to make a comeback recently. And they I know. They, they, for a little Pump and 
smoke per or whatever the fuck. They've been hanging out with Jackson Daughtery or Daughtery. You know how I say that is? What up, Kylie? An annoying, dumb little f streamer on kick. Actually making TikTok skits in an attempt to promote their latest song, Tesla. And that's always been viewed as a bit of a corny way to promote a song. So it's strange seeing artists that used to be insanely so huge doing that on TikTok. And a while ago, he but, even posted yeah, yeah, a snippet yeah, yeah. of him heavily by. Like, imagine that's who Lil Pump's hanging out with now. Me too, man. He's such a fucking prick. Thing eat, which people were really upset about. <laughs> So it's clear that Smoke Perk Dang. is struggling to accept the reality of they the situation. I in. bet it was hot here in North Carolina. YMB Neymar, dude, I remember him. Dude, crazy thing about him. His wife is Fousey Tube's ex-girlfriend. Just a weird fact. Here is an artist I've Say covered that multiple word. times on this they channel. Say that word recently, for he's had a bit of a meltdown <laughs> that I believe is an update. Like I said, Sorry, I've covered Chuck. him here before, so if you want a more in-detail breakdown of his whole career, feel free to check out this video on him. Why this the YNBN Namir gang even said he liked it. But basically, Namir blew up with songs like Rubbing Off the Paint and was fairly successful for a handful of years. He helped put on artists like Almighty J and Corday, who in particular would go on to be much more successful than Namir himself, especially since fans liked his lyrical abilities. But as Corday rose, Namir began to fall in the shadows of his friend. Couple that with cringy songs like Soul Train and just overall bad music, Namir began falling off hard. Because of this, what Namir started fuck? doing a lot of goofy things that led the entire internet to lose any respect they had left for him. What he even dude? had his own L compilation. Other than songs like Apostapa with 21 Savage going viral on TikTok in 2021, Namir Apostapa. hadn't seen much success since like 2018. He did briefly sign with Def Jam, but after releasing his album Faster Car Music, it's likely he was dropped since it didn't perform so well. Jeez. By 2022, it was pretty well established that YN had views. fallen off. But even then, he was denying it. He said, People constantly saying I fell off. Whole time I'd just be chilling and staying to myself. I've been viral my whole life. This stuff cool, but it's really whatever. They would never really understand. But that was not the last time that Namir would deny falling off. Because he went on another huge Everything rant inside. after a recent beef with Aiden Ross. About a month ago, Aiden Ross offered what Namir 20k to box in an event he was hosting, but Namir asked for a 100k. Aiden responded on stream saying that Namir was not worth 100k and instead talked about how he not only would have made 20k, but that he would have also gotten a ton of free promo and maybe it would have helped to revive his career. Following that, they went back and forth for a little bit. I got it. Namir, Namir, you're not worth $100,000. You fell off. You suck at music. You failed your music career. Namir decided to respond to this Damn. on Twitter by showing off all of his platinum and gold plaques with the caption one hit wonder with a yawning emoji. But the issue was no one was calling him a one hit wonder. They were saying that he fell off. So then he went to show his Google Crash network, which is supposedly $4 what million. Dollars. However, those are notoriously unreliable. The top comment on this post is literally, YBN Namir is the first person to claim his Google net worth, which is true because That's these are crazy. super inaccurate. And there was also a bunch of Instagram posts that I can't find anymore because he deleted them, but basically he was posting you, all these like unreleased songs and playing them out of his notes app with tons of big features and big names. And he was basically trying to show off that he still has hit making potential. So clearly Namir has denied falling off and decided to flex his money and his accolades. But just like with Smoke Perp, his Damn. real situation is revealed by his actions. At at the beginning of this month, he was caught charging fans $3 to DM him, and then tweeted about it defending himself. Even more recently, Damn. he posted to his story, lock in with CEO $3 just to, just to DM somebody? Here, starts with a feature but could easily go to, roll with me to all my shows, interviews, premieres, and real studio sessions. A what young man will fly this? you from your hometown and change your life. Call one of my other rapper homies and set up a collaboration for you and make you go platinum. When you sign to me, I will blow you up. I honestly don't fuck? have any words for this. Why I is it like made in Snapchat? I don't understand flexing what you got. I've no never real. seen an artist so down bad for money that they're no gonna real extra. Why would anyone DM you anyways? A CEO and a professional marketer and it's just insane. But to be honest, you can't help but feel a little bit bad for people like Namir and some of the others in this video. I swear to God, I, I take comments. <laughs> I'm not the type of person that just, oh yeah, I'm not going to check my yeah. YouTube comments or Instagram. I check all that shit. 
And I'm like, damn, y'all really saying this? Y'all was just on my motherfucking side. I'll be like, damn, I'll be, I'll be feeling hurt in the motherfucking house. I mean, imagine the entire internet clowning on you for years, making damn. fun of all of your failures. You already got to deal with the financial issues and knowing that your career is over. And now you have a bunch of people online pointing it out to you and reminding you of it. And I would tell you guys to be nicer to these artists because they're people too, but it's Whoa. the internet and I know that won't happen. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can subscribe. I can ask you to do that. So go ahead, do it. That's fucking dope.